What's up, I'm Troubleshoot, the Battlefield 6 beta is well underway, and in this video I'll show you how to squeeze the most out of it in terms of competitive edge and of course FPS. When the game fully releases, you'll find another video linked down below, optimizing that as well. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all, instead in the description down below you'll find steps to get even more out of your system. So, starting from the main menu, if you're looking for a nice place to test your FPS, scroll down and head across to the firing range. Here, most of your settings will scale very similarly to how they do in multiplayer, so you can very easily see the difference right here. Unfortunately though, you can't change any of your settings here, which would be nice, especially for tweaking sensitivity and things like that. To get even more out of your game, head back to the main menu or pause while you're in game and head across to the options tab. We'll start off with a quick competitive edge. Head down to the graphics tab on the far left and scroll down slightly to camera settings. Set your field of view as you're comfortable with. While it does technically affect your FPS, it's much more important to get it to something you're comfortable with rather than trying to maximize your FPS. The same goes for FOV in a vehicle. Weapon field of view I would recommend wide so that it sticks out a bit further to the side, giving you more screen space. Then right down here, from world motion blur to film grain, just crank everything down to the minimum or turn it off. This way there's less blur and distraction, less shake, and of course, distracting things have been turned off. Scrolling down further past display to interface and HUD here, I'd recommend turning off the soldier HUD motion and vehicle motion, which stops your HUD shaking around when there's explosions and things like that happening nearby. It's just a bit less visual clutter, so you can more easily focus on important action. Scrolling down further yet, icon and indicators. Inside of HUD icons over here, you can change the opacity for basically everything. Now, without running through each of these options individually, what I've done is made things a little bit less opaque so you can see through them a bit better when you're zoomed in or they're behind objects showing you with a really quick visual indicator where exactly things are in 3D space. Here's my objective icons, friendly icons, squad icons, enemy icons, neutral, and the ping marker icons at the bottom. With these simple changes, it might be a bit easier to see where things are at a very quick glance, subconsciously, without every icon being exactly the same color. Then scrolling down further yet, we've got crosshairs and indicators, and in here, we can set our crosshair color, white is the default, and we can set, scrolling down, different colors for different actions. So for example, you can change maybe a headshot color to a red or something that suits you better, kill color, maybe a darker red or orange, armor soft and hard hits, which I'm pretty sure will only be available in the Battle Royale. And of course, scrolling down here, you also get the option to turn off damage numbers, which a lot of people have been complaining about. Here's where you do it. Then, to actually get more out of your system, head across to the graphics tab, and over here, you've got a performance preset. Changing this from custom to performance basically sets your graphics options to the lowest setting. The balance preset over here seems to match maybe medium or high. Depends on your graphics card, of course. Performance is just automatic, almost everything down to low. I say almost because there's one option that isn't changed by this. If we change it to custom and play around with the graphics quality preset here, I'll give you a preview in the firing range. Apologies for any recording lag here, but the game itself isn't lagging. OBS is just starved for resources. At the ultra option, I'm getting 107 FPS, high 105, medium 110-ish and low 116, 117. My FPS numbers are very different when I'm not recording and during benchmarking, each step takes me down in FPS quite drastically. So low, I had 135, medium 130, high 120, and ultra 119. That was in the firing range here. However, on actual maps, the steps are mostly similar. Low, 101, medium and high, 96, and ultra 80. So I definitely recommend playing this game probably high at highest, or of course, low at lowest. However, we'll be breaking down things individually here because some of these options actually don't really have any kind of effect. If we open the graphics tab over here, you'll see a whole bunch of options and we'll need to crank to custom, which is the last option here, in order to change any of these. So the one option that isn't changed and does actually have a pretty big effect on your system when you set everything down to the lowest is screen space ambient occlusion. The lowest here is GTA or low instead of off, which is a little bit surprising because changing this from GTA or low to off took me from in-game from 115 to 120 FPS, a pretty sizable jump, and in the firing range, 130 to 135. Not bad at all. This is the absolute bare minimum that you can get, and of course, 
we're going to be raising a few freebies here that make the game look so much better without any performance impact. First of all, obviously, if you have more than enough VRAM in your graphics card, you can freely crank texture quality, texture filtering quality, and mesh quality over here, as they have basically no effect on your performance anywhere. This is through pretty thorough testing. They do say that mesh quality here has an effect on all of your parts, but for me at least, there was no difference here. Let's turn off that annoying overlay. Terrain quality, no difference here. And even undergrowth quality, though I would assume some sort of jungly, very vegetation dense maps will actually benefit from having this set to a lower number. Effects quality is situational. For the most part, I didn't see a difference here. But of course, when you're running around in a battlefield, things aren't all that stable while you're testing and benchmarking. If there's a bunch of big explosions and things like that, this is the option that's likely going to cause your FPS to drop. If you experience major stuttering, come back here and turn this down. Then volumetric quality. I didn't see a difference in the firing range, but I did on the actual map itself. Low had me at 120, high at 118, and ultra at 116. For the most part, leave it on low. Lighting quality, I didn't have an effect here, but it may on your system. Local light and shadow, I thought did, but after more thorough testing, I didn't see a difference here either. Sun shadow quality has no effect in the firing range and indoor maps, but of course, outdoor maps is a pretty big change here. On low, I was sitting at 120, medium, 118, high 114, and ultra 108. So for the most part, keep this on low for a big performance boost. Then shadow filtering, we've got PC PCF and PCSS, I didn't see a difference here. The same goes for reflection quality here, low, medium, high, no difference in my case. Then screen space reflections and reflection quality. Reflection quality, while SSR is turned off, had no effect on performance. When reflection quality is set to low and you have screen space reflections set to anything else, there's no performance difference here either. The only place that I did see a performance difference is when reflection quality is medium or high and screen space reflections is anything but off. When it's turned off, I got a solid 116, on a low 109, and high 102. So there's a pretty big performance impact here for screen space reflections, but only when reflection quality is set to medium or high. If you leave this down to your low, you'll still have reflections in game, which does raise the graphics quality quite a bit, and there's basically no performance impact here. If you're worried about it, set SSR to low and reflection quality to low as well. Then post-processing quality, no matter what I set this to, I didn't see a difference, and even turning on vignette chromatic aberration and film grain, there was no difference here either for me, but of course your system might be slightly different. Then screen space, ambient occlusion, and global illumination, usually a pretty heavy hitter, and in this game I did see quite a big difference between these. So on low I was setting at 119 FPS, GTAO low 116, GTAO high 115, SSGI low 102, and SSGI high 97. For the most part, off will give you the most performance. GTAO, low or high, there's almost no difference here. And SSGI, low or high, there's a relatively big jump between low and high. And of course, between each group of options, there's a pretty big jump as well. So for the most part, SSAO and GI should be set to off. Otherwise, if you do want some, leave it on GCAO low, if not high. Then finally, high fidelity objects amount. For the most part, I assume this has to do with your VRAM on your system. I couldn't see a difference between these. They say that it hits your CPU pretty high, and I would assume that this mostly happens when you're running around. This is probably going to be traversal stutter and things like that. So if you find that you're dropping FPS when you're turning corners and showing new areas, this is probably one of the options that's going to cause some FPS drops, but I could be wrong with that. For the most part, these are your optimized graphics settings. While it does look like a lot of this is set all the way up to the higher end, and it really is, the biggest thing is keeping your video memory or VRAM well below the maximum or, of course, the maximum of your graphics card. If you're able to do that properly, you can happily enjoy much higher FPS with basically no extra cost. So enabling our overlay here once more, I'm getting a solid 113 FPS, and if we drop everything down to the low preset, I'm getting 115, 116, which is a very small boost in FPS. Obviously, though, quality has dropped quite drastically. If we set SSAO and global illumination down to off from low, again the default, we get another boost to 119 FPS. So for the most part, 5 FPS or so difference for a huge boost in quality, definitely well worth it, especially when it's only like 4 to 5% of your performance, really not bad at at all. And of course, from the ultra preset of 102, 101, we do get a pretty big boost in performance, not to mention screen space reflections do look very strange here. And of course, I'm not too sure what this has to do with, but here it is definitely very distracting.
expecting. I definitely do think my optimized settings are much more visually appealing, and of course, they give you way better performance. Now, if you're wondering where DLSS, upscaling, and things like that are, they're hiding in this advanced menu down here, and you can change your options here. By default, it's using a TAA, which is a little bit blurrier. If we set this to DLAA, we'll drop a tiny bit of performance, but you should see a big visual boost. There's also FSR AA and XESS native AA. All of these take your standard native resolution game that's actually running really well considering modern games standards, and it'll just apply some magic on top of it, making them look even better. If you turn off AA completely, you should see a small boost in performance. Let's check that out. So I've reset most of my graphics options. Here's AA turned off 120 FPS, then TAA 117 18. So a very small performance drop for a pretty big jump in quality. There's less aliasing, obviously, things like that. Switching to DLAA, there'll be a bigger hit in performance. So this is NVIDIA DLSS on top of your native resolution, adding extra quality to it. And the visual boost is definitely pretty noticeable, but so is the performance hit. We've dropped to about 105. You can expect the same thing from AMD FSR native AA, of course, although the performance drop here isn't as noticeable, but also things don't look as sharp. For the most part, if you want extra quality for the cost of a few FPS, definitely do set your native AA turned on, either to DLAA for NVIDIA cards or FSR native AA for everything else. If you do need extra FPS, the upscaling technique here can be used. Choose DLSS, FSR, or XESS, and all of these will give you an upscaling quality slider. This should adjust your resolution, apply some magic upscaling on top of it and give you a pretty big boost in performance. So starting off, we'll go from native resolution TAA 115 to DLSS quality 128, a huge boost in performance with really no visual impact to balance the solid 137, 138, not bad at all. Performance and ultra performance, I wouldn't really recommend going to. You'll start noticing some weird visual artifacts, but performance should, of course, improve quite a bit. This is performance, 143. The recording's lagging a bit, but the game isn't. And finally, ultra performance, 150. Not bad at all, and the game definitely looks playable, if not a little bit blurry. And of course, you'll notice some weird artifacts once in a while. The higher your native resolution, be it 4K or 2K, the better the game will look in the ultra performance and performance options. But of course, if we stand too close to these lines, uh, there we go. There's a weird flickering effect and things like that that can happen steadily with lower upscaling options. Now, of course, on top of this, if you wish, but I wouldn't recommend, there is a frame generation toggle here for AMD FSR. I assume if you have a compatible NVIDIA graphics card, you can enable this for NVIDIA frame generation, but for the most part, at least on all graphics cards and all upscaling techniques, which is nice to see, you can use frame generation if you wish. Obviously, this is going to add a ton of input latency, basically no matter what, and I'd only really recommend enabling it if you're getting a comfortable 60 FPS or above, otherwise you're really going to notice that input latency impact. Obviously though, I wouldn't really recommend enabling it at all unless you really want to. Then future frame rendering here as well increases visual smoothness, but again at the cost of input lag. If we turn on both of these, we're getting a solid 156 and it should feel a little bit better than frame gen, I suppose, but for the most part again, I wouldn't recommend playing with either of these. Finally, at the very bottom, we've got performance overlay. Here we can set it to simple, which shows you these options in the top right, extra, which shows you a lot more. Let's turn off my overlay. There you go. And advanced, which gives you a graph and so much more here. Obviously, if you want a more customizable one, you'll need to use River Tuner and maybe MSI Afterburner to customize your own overlay, much like I have over here. But for the most part, simple really isn't bad and it gives you most of your information that you need. Finally, frame rate limiter. I wouldn't recommend enabling this unless, of course, you want to conserve battery life, generate less heat, or you're trying to, for example, record on OBS or stream and that's lagging. In which case, cap this to slightly below what FPS you're actually getting, and that should free up a ton of resources for other background processes like OBS, Discord streaming, watching YouTube videos, etc. to not lag anymore. Though I would definitely recommend capping your FPS if you want to do it with something like River Tuner for much more consistent frame pacing, timing, etc. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, set this to Enabled. By default, it's Enabled plus Boost, but this will put more draw on your CPU and should only really be used if your CPU is much more underpowered than your GPU. So I'll drop this down to Enabled. And that's basically that. I think I'll leave DLSS set to quality for a pretty big boost in performance at no real cost. Obviously, as I'll be recording, I will cap my FPS to probably 60 or 80 using River Tuner and using upscaling should put me way above that mark by default, meaning that the game will perform really well. And that extra headroom given to me by upscaling should give even more performance 
for other apps on my system, even while a game performs at its best. So yeah, here you go. In-game, with my optimized settings and DLSS set to quality, I'm getting a solid 94, 95-ish FPS. Things, of course, will change as the battlefield does, and my position as well. The game looks super sharp, and it's definitely very impressive to reach high numbers on a 3080 Ti playing at 2K without the need for upscaling by default. That's become a really annoying pet peeve of mine. A lot of games are forcing upscaling by default, and of course, even worse, some of them are actually lying about what resolution the game's actually running at. To see a game perform this smoothly is actually really, really nice. If I cap my FPS to 80, for example, frame pacing is basically rock steady, and of course, things like OBS should no longer be lagging, YouTube videos, etc. But yeah, that's that. That's my quick optimization guide to get the most out of Battlefield 6's open beta. Of course, you can check the description down below when the full game releases for that full optimization guide, and of course, any related guides to get problems fixed that you may be experiencing as well. I received reports of a few of them. Anyways, that's really that. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.